In this video, I'm gonna be going over with you how to create retro pixel art and sprites from 3D models using Blender 3.5 Compositor for using in-game engines and more. So let's dive right in. And first things first, there are some parameters that you're gonna have to set up if you wanna get the retro art style. And before we can get to that even, uh, we need to set up the shaders for our character. Currently, this character uh, has a substance painter texture that I painted on it and I need to get it to look more um, 2D-ish. So I'm gonna have to go with cell shading. So before I can set up uh, my rendering samples and uh, my rendering settings, I'm gonna have uh, to go into the shading mode and give my character a cell shading setup. Basically what you're doing is going to be going from diffuse shader to RGB, then use a color ramp. So. Uh, shader to RGB is the key here when using cell shading and if you want to set up some colors using the color ramp here it's completely fine just uh, make sure you're in constant as you can see here is the pelvis of my character being changed but I already have a skin for this character or a texture that I made in substance painter as I mentioned so I'm going to take the substance painter texture and use a mix node and make sure that the mix node is set up to color then I'm going to plug it into the output so this is what I'm going to do and instead of using the basic PSDF because I don't need any roughness information or specular information uh, this is again this is a representation of what a 2d character is supposed to look like the cell shading technique I mean this is what I'm going to be doing using my already made textures mixing them with a color ramp and a diffuse and setting up the shadows and it's also worthy of note that uh, the lights that you have in your scene uh, should not emit any shadows you can do that from the lighting setup make sure that there are no shadows just like I have it here and what's cool about this that the sprite that you make is going to have these shadows basically baked in and if you animate it uh, the shadow will change with it so you don't have to change any normals basically if you dived into how uh, the Genshin Impact shading works like um, it's very difficult to have a character move around and have the same shading that you want but in this case we're gonna have a sprite uh, that we're going to render out from the engine directly so we don't need to mess around with anything it's going to look perfect in every way that we want and by the way, if you're interested on how I make these characters, I'm gonna leave a link down below on how I made them for a game jam. I'm gonna leave a quick video and a long video, so choose whatever it is you want. Now let's go into the settings that we need. And first things first, we need to set the sampling steps to something lower than 64. The sampling steps should be around 15 or 5. I got a good result from 5, and you need to make sure that uh, the resolution is 1080 by 1080p, of your camera I mean because this is a sprite that I want to animate and put in game by the way and I'm going to have uh, my frame rate set up to custom 15 this is how I want my animations to be copy the settings that I have right in front of you and now I'm going to set up my sampling steps to 5 because even with just the sampling steps set up to 5 you can get these sharp edges around your character just like you get in some retro games and this is the first render. I'm already getting somewhat of uh, a low poly retro pixel art style. But there are some other settings that I need to mess with. I need to make the background transparent. Again, this is a character that's going to have a custom background that I'm going to make in Stable Diffusion. Or if you want to, you can make them in Paint or whatever other software that you could use. And now let's go to the important step. I'm going to do compositing, live compositing in Blender. I'm going to add a scale node, two of them. And in between them, I'm going to add a pixelate node to maintain the scaling that I made. I'm going to set up the scale node to something around 0.1 or 0.2. And the other scale node, I'm going to set it up to something like 5 or 4. And already I'm getting a good result. And if you want to like have it uh, procedural, you can use this method. I've seen people use it online. You can use a value node and a divide math node. So you can control how much pixelation you get. And do the same node setup that you have uh, in front of you here in the screen. And I'm not using a view node because I'm seeing everything in the 
cheating editor here. Blender 3.5 compositor is awesome, by the way. You should really learn how to use it. Anyway, the filter size has little effect, but I've been experimenting with it and I've been getting some satisfying results using a filter size of 5. And the other parameter that you're going to have to work with is the shadows and the light, so you don't get any uh, shadow glitches in your final sprite. So make sure you have soft shadows turned on uh, to get a smooth render, final render I mean. And now we're going to be moving on to line art. I'm going to need you to add uh, a grease pencil object. Press Shift A to add a grease pencil object. And to that object that you've added, I want you to add a modifier, which is a line art modifier. This could make uh, your performance a bit slow. This is why I changed it to this wireframe. Then I'm going to pick the group in which my character is in, so I can only select that group and not everything in the scene. I have multiple characters in the scene that I'm going to use the line art on later. And you can set uh, many parameters, but I'm satisfied with having just an outline outside my character. And I don't want it to be really thick, and I want it to have lower opacity. Then afterwards, I can render out the animation that I made as PNGs. So I can export them outside and use a background, as I'm going to show you. Now, this is called Stable Diffusion. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do use tiling and input a really simple prompt uh, to make something like a game level, just like you see here. And I'm going to use uh, flat colors and make something like uh, the levels that you see in Metroid and really old NES games. This is a very experimental step, so to those of you who use uh, Stable Diffusion, uh, you should be very patient and experiment with your prompts in order to get a good result. The second step that I'm going to use, I'm going to use Pixelate, which is an extension that you could use in Stable Diffusion. Here you could see I was trying it on one of my characters, but I didn't get such a good result. But now one of my uh, Stable Diffusion generations is giving me something of a good vibe and the two parameters that you're gonna have to be messing with is the color palette how many colors you want in your screen and how much do you want it pixelated the lower the color palette is the more retro the game looks like and the higher the color palette is it looks like something uh, uh, like blasphemous if you're familiar with the game or dead cells so the higher the color palette is uh, you get like a modern game with the pixel art style uh, the lower the color palette is, it looks like something out of a handheld device from the 90s. And I'm satisfied with this vibe. I think this picture is going to look good when I combine it with my character. And again, experiment as you like. Be very patient with the generations that you make. I'm going to leave a link in the description if you want to install Stable Diffusion. I highly recommend game devs to start using Stable Diffusion for their 2D uh, sprites and their 2D environments. This is a very helpful tool, it's going to save you a lot of time. So anyway, once you're satisfied with the generation, we can now take it into Blender and see how it looks like with our character. Also you can use ControlNet for more control over your generations. but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. As you see here, I just uh, used a plane and added the texture of the level, so-called level that I made within Stable Diffusion. Then I'm going to import my uh, PNGs as plane, the animation that I made within the first uh, Blender file. I imported it as plane. This is a add-on that is free within Blender. I'm going to scale it up. place it wherever I want in the level that I made in Stable Diffusion. Press the spacebar and there you go. I just made a game level, added some parallax effect. It looks like a parallax effect. I could use some more planes here and there to give the game a bit more depth. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to use some depth here, but we're going for a 2D look. So I'm going to keep that. And if you want to change your level, all you have to do is just change the picture. 
and uh, BSDF shader. By the way, make sure that you're connected uh, to the emission as well. Connect the color information to the emission so you can get the same colors and remove any layering from your scene so you can get the final result. So that was it on how to create sprites in Blender 3.5. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful. If so, leave a like and subscribe. See you in the next one.